important question of this conversation, Alia Bhatt. Who is the President of India? Oh God, it's just changed <laughs> now. <laughs> Madam President! <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, this question has come up in, our, in your conversations, nepotism, right? And what became that discussion, say, two years ago when you were the center of it for some weird reason? Of course, I felt bad. But feeling bad is a very small price to pay for the kind of work eventually that you are respected and loved for. Actually, I'm a little bit more honest during my pregnancy people have been saying that to me that are you something is different so I said I can't help it maybe I just have no filter so actually you have my the best version of me right now perfect perfect Hello and welcome to Sit With Hitlist, our completely unscripted podcast plus print plus video series my name is Mayank Shekhar and with me is well Alia Bhatt in the house ladies and gentlemen Clapping for myself. <laughs> well, firstly, is it Alia Bhatt or is it Alia Bhatt Kapoor? Alia Kapoor Bhatt, how does it go? Whatever you are. You know, what is it for you? I will and always will be Alia Bhatt and hmm. now I'm also a Kapoor. So if you want me to say Alia Bhatt Kapoor, you can say Alia Bhatt Kapoor. But what is it on your passport? Does it remain the same? Is it, Abhi the filhal I have not been had the time to change, even add the fact that I have a husband on my pas <laughs> passport. So he has very promptly gone and done that. Huh. Uh, so I am still in the process because um, I'm, I've been traveling so much, I went to London for two months, I came back, now again I'm going to travel for a holiday and I'm going to go back again, I'm going to travel. So when travel is so much, my passport I don't, can't give for any submission, for any change. What are you thinking about it? I'm going to do it. Oh, you're going to do it? Oh, okay. Oh, that's interesting. I have to add all these things. Hmm. I mean, I'm happy to do it. I'm a... Um, so it'll be Alia Bhatt Kapoor basically. Yeah, and I have to add the... You're Ranbir not part Kapoor. of Bhatt camp anymore. It's a no, no, camp. I will always be Alia Bhatt. Okay. My screen name will always be oh, Alia okay. Bhatt. That Let's put sense. it that way. Right. Since, you know, we're going to have a, a child now, I don't want to be the Bhatt whilst we, the Kapoors are travelling together. You know what I mean? Right, I don't want right. to feel left out. So I'm like, okay, no, I want to be, uh, even on my travel, like, you know, like documents and when we travel, I don't want to be the left out person. Well, congratulations anyway. Thank you so uh, much. For the marriage, for the baby to be. Thank you. Uh, of course, uh, for your own production. Yes. But, you know, I have to first tell you a little bit about this particular series on an honor of series that we do, Alia. Um, you know, we started a few years ago with Amir Khan, okay? And uh, it was a pretty decent conversation. It was the first one that we had, first guest that we had here on this show. And uh, this is around the time Secret Superstar was coming out, okay? So it was going to release a couple of days later. A lot of people had seen the film before, including me. And when we started the conversation, we went on talking about lots of things. And it was a good conversation, except Amit knew that I'd seen Secret Superstar, but I wasn't talking about it at all, okay? And the moment I said, it's a fantastic film, he just totally opened up. <laughs> so I'm not going to make that mistake again. And of course, let you know and let the audiences know. And it's a fantastic film. Like an absolutely fantastic film. And uh, so now... The it's fact that you have said that right now, I already have so much more attention on me. Yay. So thank you so Yay. much. And also, I'm, I'm obviously not just saying that because you're going to open up now. No, right? no, of course. Listen, I'm a very honest person. Oh, really? So yeah, I'm a very honest person in general. And actually, I'm a little bit more honest during my pregnancy. People have been saying that to me, that are you something is different. So I said, I can't help it. Maybe I just have no filter, you know. So actually, you have my the best version of me right now. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Especially now that you've called my film fantastic, so even more. So firstly, of course, uh, because I want to delve in your, into your film a little bit first, is this particular character that you play of Badru, right? who is from a certain socio-economic background, from Bombay, which is quite similar to the socio-economic background of Safina. Correct. Uh, from Gully Boy, except these two people are diametrically opposite. Yeah. Where Safina was a completely feisty person, uh, here there's a meek person and also like a gullible uh, in love, right? Was that something that drew you to this character? Because you, it's from the same world, but two different people? See, when I choose a script, I'm not choosing it based on what, I mean, I am actually a lot of it of like what I've played so far, ke kuch alag karne ko mm. milega. so yes, maybe she comes from the same socio-economic background, maybe she comes from the same area even, mm. you know, uh, set in the heart of Mumbai, Baikala, but she's this extremely naive, eternal optimist, almost silly mm. at times kind of girl which I found very refreshing only because 
then you're really testing her with the circumstances that she's put in to see the kind of personality that erupts within even a person like her when you change her circumstances mm. i found very interesting i found very kind of um, new unique and of course challenging of course this one is from baikala safina was from kurla yeah. if i'm not mistaken have you actually met women from these two neighbors of similar economic backgrounds i mean i know that ranveer did meet those yeah. two people those two hip hop artists that the film was based on did you actually meet someone like safina to get a better sense you're a juhu girl um, pretty sure not with not that much access to that world no, i didn't it, again it's very strange it's not something that i ever force if it happens naturally it's not something that i feel ke milne se mera kuch ho jayega because i always follow the written word okay but i depended a lot on jasmeet for that my director because she spent 3 months in baikala hmm. so she would come and tell me things and i am like i'm a bit of like like a sponge like i mm-hmm. you the you can know who i've hung out with the day i've hung out with that person because i start speaking like that person so who i is speaking like right now that right now speaking like myself because okay. <laughs> i've hung out with nobody <laughs> today <laughs> but yeah i would pick up a lot from her when we did readings and all of that like vijay morya has done dialogues and stuff like that so i pick up a lot from him um but i didn't meet anyone and all of that I, again it, if just me really wanted me to do it i mm. would have done it but she didn't really push it i didn't really ask so i just went with what i had created in my head for the character here's the thing right and you seem to say this quite often about what your acting process is and it seems either you don't want to demystify it and let it be what it is and you know chal raha chalne do is that you're extremely instinctive you just do it you do the take and then you move out Yeah. Would that be correct to say that is that roughly what you do? Pretty much. See, I do a lot of thinking. I'm a, I'm very in my head, but it's in my head now. How am I supposed to express okay. that? I did pick up something during Gully Boy when I was doing workshops with Atul Mongia where every character and every you know character actually operates from five basic emotions. So even if it's a scene of confront, even if it's a confrontational scene, say she's a very aggressive person, she'll maybe operate from that place. things like that like i'm yeah. giving you basic mm. examples so maybe just meet and i had a conversation of like okay what are her five words what are the five emotions that she do- like that, that dominate her life mm. but those are academic chats hai mm. matlab wo sab film shuru hone se pehle hi hum log karte hai when you actually are on set none of that comes into play because you if you are living in the moment and if you are responding to what happens now in a shot if i have dropped the salt i have dropped the salt Now I have not planned that. I've dropped the salt, but then I have to respond to her. if she's a superstitious person, what she'll do with that mm. salt. So things like that, like living a character, and sometimes it doesn't happen with every film. But living a character in the shot is so much more fun than living it before, mm. because then you're really responding and living and breathing in that moment. Uh, and that's why I had so much fun working with Chef Ali because she's exactly like that. She, you don't know only what she's going to do. So I'm not an actor. So spontaneous, you mean? Is that what it is? The moment you could do things which wasn't planned, which wasn't in the script. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, but also not too much. You okay. have to stick to the written word because yeah. otherwise, then anything can happen. Then the film will lose its head and its tail. But it's just responses, like it's just breathing and living in the moment. So yeah, if you ask me what is your process, I can't tell you. Not because I don't want you to know, because I don't have one. Hmm. I have. basic things that i do to prepare so i am ready but then i live the moment as the and you also say that uh, a lot depends on the director it's the yeah. director who sort of molds you into the characters that you play uh, for instance if it's uh, sanjay leela bansali right uh, would you not be able to do gangubai in the way you did if it wasn't for bansali 100% i okay. i took his character i mean i took so much of his personality and i put that into gangubai's character the way he speaks and the way he thinks and the and he has a certain attitude and a certain tushan with which he looks at you and he delivers a certain moment because it's in his head so i would pick that up from him chalna bhai chalna aage badhte hai na so i would take those little little things and put that into the character i would have definitely not been able to do it if it wasn't for him it's totally different like a director it's a director's medium it's the written word and then the actor the actor has to collect all those things and then put that in front the, of would it, would it be fair to say that over your career of a decade plus you actually pick the director more than even the subject or the script 
it can't be a coincidence that you practically work with all the top directors there are in bombay is there anyone left i mean started with karan johar bansali we've spoken about you know abhishek chobe another fantastic director zoya akhtar can't get better than that you pick the director because you just feel safe in their company would that be correct to say let's say first they pick me huh. <laughs> <laughs> they pick me then i pick them yeah of course because it is a director's medium yeah you can't it is you will not be able to deliver um, anything without the director holding you would it be a leap of faith for you then because your first film as a producer and it's with the first time director yes but like like exactly so sometimes it's just it's the combination of the written word and the director so she brought this script to me she hmm. co-wrote it with parvez hmm. um but she wrote it and she wanted to direct it so when the director has also the writer in fact you feel a little bit more confident mm. because she's lived with the world she's lived with the character she's created it from scratch it's a totally original story so then i feel like okay that leap of faith is worth taking because i know that she'll be able to deliver basis the fact that she's created it and also through conversation and mm. instinct of just like okay she's got this world mm. um and she's used to give references of films that i love like jojo rabbit we used to talk a lot about mm. that this is dark not dark comedy but there yeah there's a dark world but there's a certain comic right loveliness to the characters and the tone that you're taking so it's such a fine line and i'm i may be sound, sounding a little artistic right now but i'm saying it's what's wrong with sounding artistic <laughs> and it's I'm a just saying that legit thing to sound it's not that you are not <laughs> it's not it's it's not that clinical sometimes mm. it's just instinct and conversation that leads you to a safe place so yeah it was a risk to take but it's a very happy risk that i took right i think there's a line in the movie which says you can't mix uh, ice cream with chicken uh, which is in reference to horror comedy that the writer is writing it yeah. almost seems like a reference to the film itself yeah it's kind of meta right it's meta <laughs> as it were yeah. so i mean going back to to directors and seeking out directors alia i mean it's it's a rather well known fact that you actually seeked out bansali for instance right absolutely there were i mean you auditioned for black yeah He was going to do a film with you called Balika Vadu. Vadu. Yeah. How old were you then? Well, when he decided to make it, I think I was about nine. Wow. And then he said, maybe I'll wait a couple of years and make it when you're like a little older. But then I think he dropped the idea altogether, which till today he says I shouldn't have dropped the idea uh, because it went on to become such a popular show. Eventually, Eventually. yes. Eventually, yeah. Um, I shouldn't have listened to everybody. I should have made it and all of that. But yeah, I I really seeked him out. because i remember even then like it was such a big deal for me like i was so young i was a baby but i was like oh i want to work with this filmmaker and then of course when the idea of filmmaking became more clear to me then it was even more of a sort of like a chase and then you are also told na these tales that oh, what, at 9 you're like calling him up like listen do you have a role nahi nahi mujhe usko i didn't even know my mother just took me hmm. for the audition of black and she didn't tell me so my mom was very very particular like i used to get a lot of offers as a child actor okay. which she didn't after you did sangharsh after i did sangharsh right. you know as a thing i got hmm. a lot of these offers my mom said no like hmm. we did it as a one off thing hmm. but she didn't want me to be a child actor hmm. she said you know you live you study you have a life and we will get into acting later hmm. yeah i was always very clear i wanted to be an actor hmm. i was like we'll see this was one i think she wanted me only to do because of the audition Mm. because she said you know like let's start auditioning and of course it's sanjeev leela bansali so if you work with him whatever it is you have that experience yeah you won't just be a child actor yeah exactly right, right. like you will be represented in a totally yeah. different way mm. so i didn't even know i was going for this audition of black she just took me for she said we are going for an audition mm. and i went and then in, when we were literally entering the gate i remember it's the building that he still staying in um, magnum opus mm. <laughs> how <laughs> ironical that is building is also called magnum opus <laughs> Um so we entered the building and she was speaking to the watchman and she said um, Sanjay Leela Bansali ke ghar pe jana and I was like huh? like my mouth my jaw literally dropped because I didn't know and she purposely didn't tell me because she knew I would get very nervous. Oh you were a fan girl on base of what? What did you see? On his movies how? Oh which ones? Like was there some movie that you were constantly watching like Hum Dil Dil Jo Sanam okay right. Kamushi I must have seen much later on it's a hmm. uh, very you know hmm. nuanced film but right. i had was in love with hamdil hmm. i mean i don't know at that time which films i had seen but i had seen enough to right right you knew him be a fan right which is unusual for a child yeah. to know that director's names and for jaws to drop yeah yeah, yeah yeah so i jaw dropped went in met him instant connect um instant like 
instant connect like hmm. just i don't know how whatever it was it was instant and um, so he said no 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 he audition me for black i don't know what audition i did but he said no 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 this girl's going to be a heroine we have to make different film with her different film with her so then he i like he came up with this balika vadu concept we did costume for ourselves Oh well, he was in maybe it was already there. I don't sure. know, but इसको लेते हैं वो वाला idea आ गया तो we did costume rehearsals, we did like I would did dance on Dola Re Dola and all of that. Like all of this has happened. And imagine Ranbir was in the office throughout this. Hmm. We've done a photo shoot where my head was on his shoulder. Everything has happened. घूम फिर के I don't know what happened. I went back to school. You know, so decided not to make the film. But then that वो मेरे दिल में like that कीड़ा got stuck. That one day I have to work with him. So when I joined the movies, the understanding was. Sanjay Leela Bansali works with the act with actors at their prime. Hmm. When they're at their prime, he works with them. <laughs> you know, like that was that. That's the aura, na. No? That aura. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I'll reach my prime one day, and one <laughs> day I will get to work with him. So um, yeah, when it happened, I was. It was like a dream come true. And actually, it started like like break a leg, na, situation, because we started with to do a film called Inshallah, hmm. which never happened. With Salman. With Salman, right. which never happened, hmm. which got shelved. Hmm. Which I was like, what the hell? Like my dream is just happening, coming, like was just coming true, and it's now cancelled. And then he came to me with Gangu Bai, and then that's what I talk about when it, like, when you speak about the factors of like luck and destiny. Like, had it not been for the film getting shelved, maybe Gangu Bai would have never come my way. So hmm. how everything works for. Also, did you walk out like when he, when you first heard the script? When he first told you what he's trying to make, and you just got up and you left, and he <laughs> was just left wondering what happened. None of that happened. He just made that up. No, no, he didn't make it okay. up. He so exaggerates. So he said she ran out of the office. He was not wrong. Okay. He, I did get a little thrown off with the subject hmm. because we were supposed to do another film. So I was like, you know, so it's a very different subject. It's hmm. totally different to what I had imagined. But I think it's only because I was coming off a totally different film, which was like a romantic film, and then suddenly this came to me. So I just needed to digest it for a second. And more than anything, it was like no, it was a no-brainer. You want to sleep on it, like you want to think about it. Yeah, but I went time. back home. I reached home and I messaged him, being like, I'm going to come and see you tomorrow. Yeah. But like typical Bansali style, you you know stormed <laughs> off no, no, no. His, his office. No, no, he said it more in a comical tone. Because she ran away. She <laughs> took her bag and she ran. But then she came running back. <laughs> But you know, obviously, you've heard this and you hear this probably every day of your life since you've turned into an actor. Is how different your characters have been from the person that you are, and how each character is different from the previous one, right? Of course, Gangu Bai being a prime example. But even then, so say a Gangu Bai is. Uh, still a Bombay person. Chances you could have been to Kamathi Pura. I think the one that really takes the cake would have to be Urta Punjab, right? I mean, girl from Jharkhand, once a hockey player. You apparently learned hockey for months, but didn't one even one month. One yeah. month you learned it. You didn't even play uh, on the screen. One shot. For wow. Not for the screen, for the song. For right. For the, yeah. 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 No. So this is a part <laughs> that was actually not even offered to you. No. You it wasn't. You went to the director and said, "Listen, I want to play this." Yeah. Because you knew about it, so Shahid and I were shooting for Shandar at the time. Hmm. So he told me about the script, saying that you know it's such a good script, and I want you to read it. And maybe he was taking my advice on it, or maybe he was actually going to suggest me for this part. I hmm. don't know. Hmm. But Shahid and I had become like really good friends, hmm. and he was just like taking my advice and just read the script. Hmm. I read the script, and I was like, wow, like what a part, hmm. and. And I was like, listen, I want to do this part. Hmm. He said, okay. I mean, I also think it will be quite cool, actually, and all hmm. of that. I'm, and like, you know, you should meet Chobe. Hmm. So then I met Chobe, and I had to convince Chobe that I will do it. So he was like, I'm still realigning because I had a certain image in his mind. Hmm. But she's this young girl, heroine. Hmm. Correct, like hmm. that kind of image. Because I had done that those kind of films. Although I had done a film like Highway. Hmm. For Chobe to re reimagine me as that character was a big thing, so he had to sleep on it. So we did a look test or something like that, and um, he was still not sure. But I said, "Listen, I'll work very hard. I'll really prove myself. But I really want to play this part, and I don't know why. It was just because I wanted to prove that I can be totally opposite also. Like I hmm. wanted to prove to myself, maybe, and to the world that listen, I'm a chameleon. I can get into any shape." And size. I didn't know whether I'd be able to do it. Hmm. I just wanted to prove it somehow. So we did a look test and everything, and he something. I think something clicked in him. Maybe the dedication. Maybe the fact that I was like, listen, very charged and excited to do it. And I worked 
bloody hard on it like i really this is, worked if hard. not not mistaken the first film that you workshop for right for a month for a month with pankaj tripathi that's what i wanted to get at yes please tell me everything because pankaj tripathi really prepared you which yes. a lot of people may not know no. prepared you for this role so this was pankaj tripathi has always been a extremely reputed and loved actor but this is be- before he broke into the movie scene okay okay huh. like this was he was always very loved in theater and very loved generally and hmm. reputed amongst actors hmm. because he you know is this really really fine actor hmm. but there 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 is the a pankaj tripathi wave wave that came na after huh. that huh. it came after that okay so i got that opportunity to get his time one month hmm. so pankaj sir along with chobe and myself we would sit and work through the dialogues every day so i didn't speak much in urta punjab the character my right. character she didn't speak much but when she spoke it was very thet like the jharkhandi uh, you know yeah, that yeah. dialect yeah. so we worked on that we worked only on that same word same this thing again and again all of that different workshops of body language how they sit there's a certain way they sit on their haunches and they can sit like that for hours i sat like that for 2 minutes and i got <laughs> like that my legs were hurting so he taught me how to do that like he, so we would actually sit like that and speak like that then he made me do a lot of workshops just acting workshops on how to loosen the body a certain expression which is like dead eyes open mouth but there's still so much intricacy inside the eyes like there's so much depth and there's so much pain which you can't make up you have to experience it in your head so actually this urta punjab was the first film that i went kind of method on first one and only mm. i didn't take a phone to the shoot i like i didn't have a phone i just had one device for to stay in touch with my family and there were days when i was not shooting so i would have no entertainment i would not watch any tv i would sit without entertainment you were living that person's life i was almost. living a i mean obviously not that person's life because no i was not i was sitting in a hotel yeah. room yeah yeah so totally not living that <laughs> life but i was i went a little method on it i don't know why but because i felt like it's the only thing i if i'm said i need to give it my all to transform i really need to give it my all so i kind of did give it my all did it affect you in some way because there is it one did. particular scene alia and i think uh, we've spoken about this at some point is the the haystack scene where you just went full freaking method on it and people around on the sets they got worried for you when i'm crying hmm. right yeah. see that's her big breakdown her big emotional moment um and she's just been through so much she's escaped she's been given heroin and like it's like i mean it's the worst situation you can imagine for any human being so yeah i kind of prep myself mentally for it and all of that but i had to go full all out on it and people on set should get nervous and scared for me because that is what you would feel for the character when you're watching the movie later on and all of that even my hair makeup team they were like you know Calm kind down. of being little <laughs> <laughs> very very warm towards me but i needed to do that yeah for the part and i'm happy i did it but it's i there's like there's a part of me that won't do it again like the thing is like i feel like the fact that i only played that part for 20 days was great like i don't know how i would have survived it for like 60 days you will never do something like this again i mean never say never right very hard but emotionally very hard very weird kind of feeling to feel that way na did it affect you after when you were done with the movie were there residues of it the thing is that's the film i went really method on like i told you i went and i actually visited villages nearby on the outskirts of punjab and i went and saw the girls and i spoke to them and like there was a guy sitting over there like a, there was a group of four girls and one boy he was the only one who had a phone they were not given a phone it was very difficult to see i mean what difficult to see like they are living it but they had such a lovely spirit mm. so i i felt quite like like that was something that i really really prepped hard for only because it was so alien from my life and so different from where it was but yeah i'm a person of em- like high empathy so i felt a lot of that residue maybe like in a way of like the empathy that i felt for people that who are pushed to their daily limit of life but still find a hope of survival which i i i've tried to look at the beauty in everything so i saw a lot of beauty in that obviously the one and you've said this before the one that closest came closest to you as a person was dia zindagi that's a character that you could see yourself in yeah how 
Maybe because of the life, you know, like she's a young girl, life issues, hmm. first world problems, first world problems, <laughs> child, like you know, traumatic childhood issues. But see, the world exists in your eyes, right? Like you open your eyes, and that is your world. Hmm. So what we 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 definitely when we look at it, when we give it like a, a classification, it be it's first world problems. But when you're living the problem, it's not a first world problem. Hmm. You may. F- classify it as that but you are living it and you are feeling it so she is feeling those issues um so i'm saying in terms of like cushion life yeah. and those issues yeah i right. could i could relate to that world maybe not necessarily to the character but to the world right i mean there is obviously uh, one thing that seems to me common between you and the person in darlings is you know you have this you know checklist <laughs> of stuff you want to do yes uh you know by 2000 to finish this 20 whatever you know yeah. life's goals uh, and with a timeline it almost seems to me like that's your life you know <laughs> like someone who starts a career at 17 19 years when you make your debut so i'm presuming you, for two years you worked on that part you know by uh, 29 you're married going to have a child what's the hurry boss like <laughs> calm down it's you don't have to do so much in such a little time But do you have something like this? Do you have, do you have like no. stuff that did you have it before that by thirty you'll be married with a child or no, no, no. things like that? Contrary to the character in the movie, hmm. I actually have no such thing. I don't have a list. I've never had a plan. I, in fact, used to think I'll get married very late. I'll do like you know I don't want to get married. You know, like I was one of those young girls who didn't really talk about marriage much. Hmm. But it's totally different when you fall deeply in love hmm. and. you also feel like okay no you want to start that life that next start that next point of your life you want to get into that mm. that happened very naturally with ranbir i don't know why it just happened it just felt like no i want to start that life with him and you actually don't you feel like you waited long enough strangely mm. when you get reach that kind of emotion with that person you feel like oh god i've already wasted so much time i want to now begin that journey of my life with this person so after working for so many years and i'm not like feeling like my work will stop pause or change i will continue to work you know till the very end i'm working even now and i will continue to work but that section and part of your life is something that you have to give your time to and energy to it was not going to happen by itself hmm. so it naturally happened that i wanted to do that and we wanted to do that let's put it that way i mean it almost seems like there are things that you want in life and here i mean you as a person and you just go and get it like if yeah. we go back to your interviews from 10 years ago alia you asked any question one of those current your coffee with karan uh, type of episodes where you know they do rapid fire and stuff like that first crush ranbir kapoor <laughs> you know like anything to do with somebody you want to date on screen ranbir kapoor like it's a standard answer well ranbir is actually dating other people and so are you right yeah. it's almost like you set your eyes on this guy this is the guy i'm going to get married to you know it's really weird i was just saying it like a regular cute girl yaar i was not really mean like a fan like, girl yeah like i wasn't actually going and chasing ranbir on the side or <laughs> thinking about how i can plot to get ranbir none of that was happening in fact the fact that i was saying it obviously means that i was not thinking about it sometimes you you may be you thinking about it but you never say it right but i feel like it's beautiful how it naturally worked out it naturally happened that that when we started working on this film together brahmastra we both were not seeing anyone right. it just naturally happened right. and we both for the longest time were meeting and socially seeing each other and we had our own lives and there was no there was nothing there was no interaction there was nothing there was not even a friendship i could mm. not even call and be a friend mm. but it just naturally happened at that one flight to tel aviv where we both were not seeing anybody we both were single and we both just went like oh my god like what were we doing all these years why aren't we together yeah why aren't we together actually it was a question that he kind of asked me this like what are question. we doing why aren't we together <laughs> yeah strangely he asked me this question and i was like i don't know <laughs> so yeah it's like that that's what i was talking about now i don't plan things you can't plan something like this in, in a thousand years it just works out so even me coming to the movies i wanted to do it but i never planned to launch with karan johar it just happened no seriously like for someone who always wanted to be an actor right 
what is it like to be that person? I mean, most kids are pretty confused about what they want to do. Uh, of course, no one says at age four, apparently you did, I you want to be a star. I mean, what does it even mean? Of course, in no, your I case, you actually <laughs> see things around you which could manifest itself in those, in those many ways. But when you're growing up like that, is it like you're constantly watching a lot of films and looking at these people that you want to be someday? Or is it, what is it? I'm a dreamer. Hmm. So I'm not like very like aggressive about my dreams. But I'm very, very imaginative. So I would like sit and literally spend my whole day in my head imagining that I will be one day in the movies, imagining that I'll be dancing around, imagining I'll be doing this, imagining I'll be doing that. But actually when you're living the dream, it's very different. It's a different kind of responsibility. Of course, it's lovely and it's beautiful and there's so much excitement involved, but there's also the hard days. Yeah. There's also the failures. There's also the criticism. Mm. There's also the thick skin that you have to have. But you can only do all of that and more if you love what you're doing and if you're very passionate about what you're doing. So because I was so passionate about it from day one, it's so rewarding when you have your characters that you connect, when you say that you like a film that of mine, I f it's very rewarding, that's a very rewarding feeling. But there are non-rewarding days as well. So how do you keep it together on that days and not be like, okay, I won't make, like I won't let, I, I won't let this get to me. Hmm. Only, only really finding the joy in the work can make you do that. Um, You've hardly hard, uh, had uh, non-rewarding days at work by the looks of it, right? I mean, I think what, you've had two flops in your entire career so far? Yeah, it's not... Kalank and... Shandar. Shandar. Yeah, but it's not only about the flops. Okay. I mean, yeah, of course, when the films don't do well, that's a big thing. And yeah, like I've been very grateful to have most of my films do very well and be liked and be loved or at least... Like, at least critical acclaim to mili jata. Matlab, ek range hota hai na. I'm on the opposite side of the, positive side of the range. Chalo. Hmm. But I'm saying well, there are still hard days, there are still physically exhausting days. Yeah. You still get criticism, you're still looked with like a completely different lens, Hawkeye, all of that. It's all part of the business, it's all a part of the good work that you want to put out. And at the end of the day, I think my focus was just, uh, listen, at the end of the day, I want to be taken seriously as an actor. The only way I can do that is if I give people good films and good content. Then they'll believe in me and they'll take me seriously as an actor. You know, Alia, everyone is allowed their 20s, okay? And you know, everyone in this room have been through their 20s. You are going to finish your 20s now. And when all of us look back, and I say this with, about all my friends as well, we look back and think what idiots we were. We were extremely arrogant in our 20s. Uh, we are very brash. We think we know everything. And of course, eventually life teaches you a lot. Your case may be totally different because you know, first time I saw you was at the premiere of, uh, you know, sorry from distance, not like I, or maybe we, we met, I don't remember that. But I do remember like seeing you around at the premiere and you seem like a brat to me. <laughs> and you just that person as any 19 year old would be who's making a debut. But over time you became as you and all these things that you spoke about it. I'm just trying to connect with that. Over time when you saw success and I don't know how people say success is humbling. Was that really the case with you? But you just realized there is so much more around you that you need to grow up faster than most other 20 year olds do. Yeah, because you're also living your life in the public eye, so you have to be a little bit more conscious, a little bit more responsible. You have to also deal with certain repercussions, you know. You can't just be like, oh, I want this. I can't, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, like if I'm having a snap moment, it's not I'm having a bad day. It's like, oh my God, she's so arrogant. Yeah. You know, it's not just that. Yeah. Like the judgment is on. So you have to be... And there's always a person who's meeting you for the first time. Yes. Wherever you go. Yes. Yeah. So you can't do that. Mm. You can't have that. You have mm. to keep it together most times. I've actually been somebody from the beginning who has said that, listen, I'm still... And I genuinely mean it. Like I still approach each day like it's a new day, like a newcomer. Like I'm always learning. I'm always picking it up. I'm not saying I have all the answers. I will, but I'm very instinctive. Like if I'm instinctively feeling it's wrong, I'm like, nahi karte ya. Mm. like I'm not feeling it's right. Mm. Like if I'm planning certain something, like during promotions, for example, mm. ke, no, let's not do this. I don't think it's going to work. But I give my opinion. But if, if it's 10 against one, I'll listen to the 10. It's not mm. like I'll listen to the one. That way I'm very academic because mm. I think that's the only way a person learns. But yeah, I think the humbling part is something that also comes with my up, up, upbringing and the people around with around me. Mm. I am not the first member of my own fan club. I do not believe the sun shines out of my backside. Like I genuinely believe I'm here to do a job. Mm. And if I continue to do it well, it's a byproduct of a lot of people coming and doing their job well. It's not just me doing my job well. So I value that. 
um, I don't think I'm the bee's knees, I don't think it's all about me. It's not all about me, it's about a group and a lot of people coming together and putting in a lot of effort and making it work. How about friends of yours who were, I mean, who are your age and that decade of theirs, how was it different from yours in terms of things they did? I mean, you can't just randomly land up at a nightclub, can you? No, I can't. Right. I don't want to. You, you can't <laughs> drink alone at a bar in Bombay, which I'm pretty sure your friends can. Yeah. Um, see, my friends have been very, very understanding. In fact, too understanding. Like, I actually recently realized that I have literally not been a present friend for 10 years. Mm. Um, but they let me be unpresent because they knew I was chasing something and you mm. have to make sacrifices to try and get what you want. But now I maybe, like I said, I'm moving into the next phase of right. my life. I'm trying to balance it both out, you know. Um, and actually, they've acknowledged that, that okay, you have had to make a lot of sacrifices to get where you've gotten to maybe in your career. So yeah, I have been fortunate enough to be surrounded by extremely understanding friends. You haven't lost friends in that decade? No. I have None. the same friends. No. Okay. I have the same friends that I went to school with. Hmm. There's a group of we're, we're a group of nine school? girls. Jamna Bai. Okay. A group of nine girls. And we've been connected through. Because at the end of the day, I know that actually I feel most comfortable with them because they don't really care about who I am hmm. as an actor or whatever yeah. like that they're very proud of me hmm. they're very supportive of me but they're not that doesn't matter to them hmm. what matters to them is actually me being me and me being hmm. myself right so there's a certain version of myself that I have when I'm in a public place which I don't need to be if I'm in their company so I that's that's very grounding to me that's very humbling to me because it feels comfortable and like I said the reason I've not lost them is because of them because they've been so understanding and they've been so um, supportive you know one of the things that happens to most people in professions outside of show business and cricket uh, cricket in, in only sport in India that makes so much money right and even within show business I would think actors is usually people start out in their 20s uh, they make a certain amount of money and it's not enough you, that's, that's when you're young, that's when you want to spend on all the cool things, but you don't have enough. And it's much later in life when you get a lot more money, but you don't have the time, you don't have that inclination anymore. The reverse is true for you, right? I mean, you were peaking money-wise in your 20s. <laughs> I'm sure you peak later as well. <laughs> it's not the first peak. But what was it like to be, to be so rich in your early 20s? Yeah? Okay, firstly start with how much did you make in your first film when you were 19? Uh, 15 lakhs. 15 lakh, okay. I gave and I went and deposited the cheque to my mother <laughs> and very nicely I said, Mama, you handle the money hmm. until date my mother handles my money. Okay. I don't know how much money I have in my bank account. I know it's, 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 it's a good amount. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know how much money I have and it's good that I don't. And in fact, very often my team tells me, you need to sit down, you need to see, you need to make sure, you need to know where your finances are. And actually, now that I'm having a child and all, I'm a little bit more aware of it being like, listen, at the end of the day, I need to also be like, I need to hold it together, like when it yeah. comes to my own finances yeah, and you're stuff a mother like now. that. We'll yeah, exactly. Be, yeah. Yeah. Um, but my mother said, don't worry, it'll come, it'll come hmm. easily and you'll learn it when the time will come. I did it for you, you'll do it also for your child. So it's okay, it's fine. I'm not, in fact, my CA gets very stressed out. Like, he's like, you don't <laughs> spend enough? any money. You oh, don't, don't spend, okay. Right. Yeah, like, you need to, like, just, like, enjoy a little mm. bit. Like, because he's also a family family friend. Like, yeah. but I don't. I don't. I'm not much of a spender. I, but I'm very into, like, um, actually, I'm not into even investments. Like, my mom does it and they do it for me and they let me know where okay, the investments are. When was your first car? My first car must have been then only, I guess. At 19. At Not bad, huh? Twenty. Super. <laughs> These are goals. Audi. These Audi. are career goals. Audi Q7. Audi. Yeah, that's being launched right now. <laughs> <laughs> right next door. Q5. Q5. Okay. <laughs> what first house? First house, twenty-two. Wow. <laughs> I think yeah. First house, twenty-two. Yeah, see, listen, I feel very touched wood. Mm. Totally, like totally. I feel very grateful, and I'm like little like that, like that about like even like all the privileges we have and that I fortunately I do not need to yeah. at this point stress about that aspect of my life but that's why I believe in like giving back I believe in um, 
setting, a, like I've set aside a certain amount of money that goes into CSR on a yearly basis. And um, a lot of that is about like for animals and stuff like that because it's a cause that I feel very, very passionately about. But <clears throat> even during COVID and stuff like that, like I was very aware of it. Like I feel like very, sometimes a little guilty as well. Um, I work very, very hard, but there's no saying that the hard work for one person no. is different from a hard work exactly. of another person. So yeah. hard work is hard work. That's and a I'm, given. It's yeah. a given. I'm yeah. aware of that. Hmm. So I feel very grateful. And yeah, if you're asking me, I didn't really spend and splurge and all. Like, yeah, I didn't do all of that. But I've saved enough like... So features. I mean, the sense I get is that you are a kind of person who really loves her job and everything that comes with it is a byproduct of it. Pretty much. Would that be correct? I'm not ignorant of it. Sure. I'm aware. Yeah. Like I'm, I have a little bit of a business mind that way. So, I know so much. But like, for my, I created my own children's brand. I put my own money into it. I didn't go to an investor. Hmm. I put all my own money into the creating the brand. And the brand is now really, really, uh, it's grown a lot. We've, we've expanded quite a bit. It's all, but it's all What's my it money. What's it called? Just plug it if you like. Edmama. Okay, Edmama. Children's clothing brand. Why is it called that? My cat. His name is Edward, okay. who is my inspiration for everything. What do you mean inspiration for everything? He's, like you he's and there, your chat, he's there, cat have a chat like no, every my, he's there. He's there in my Eternal Sunshine production house logo as well. Okay. So you see the beginning of the film. Yeah. It starts with the How cats. How old is Edward? Edward is like five now. Okay. It's like Ed a mama, like Ed's mama. Ah. <laughs> so yeah. Ed a mama. But it's not cat clothes, right? Those are cat clothes. Okay. <laughs> it's, just, uh, <laughs> it's just like a cute, he's just a great inspiration for everything. Right. Why is it called Eternal Sunshine? Uh, from the movie or? So yes, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind is one of my favourite films. Okay. But it's also the feeling of movies. Like I love, I love the word Eternal Sunshine. Like I believe movies are eternal. I love sunshine. Sunshine gives you a lot of warmth. Hmm. I believe movies give you a lot of warmth hmm. on a rainy, cold day. Hmm. So like Eternal Sunshine just fit. You know, were you like a massive movie fan growing up in the sense of somebody will watch the same film again and again? Is that something that happened or? I'm a total runty kind of first uh, first row movie watcher. No, Like really? that is me. Chandan cinema. Chandan cinema. Really? I have grown up watching all the number ones. Kuli number one, ye number one, that number one. I used to see Govinda <laughs> dancing and that used to be like, Mujhe Govinda banna hai. That was my dream, you know. Govinda Karishma Kapoor, I grew up watching that. Hmm. So actually this learned sort of uh, actor that people think I am, I'm totally not. I have not watched most of the f famous classic Hollywood movies or classic Hindi movies. I le recently watched Shole. I recently watched Mughal -e Azam. So I'm not academic. I was just like, I mean, surely it's hardly academic, but yeah, it's from 1975 and we were born 93, biggest, I mean, way, biggest, way biggest fair, yeah. hit, you yeah, know, like yeah. when we talk about like film, cinema, student. Yeah, I also think it's overrated. I've, but I have mind. become a, okay, we can't have that conversation, right? <laughs> but I have become a student of cinema now. Actually, thanks to Ranbir. Ranbir actually has introduced me to, he's like, this picture dekhti nahi hai. she's not interested in movies, you know, I just want to sit and I want to chat and I want to watch shows and everything. I mean, I'm making myself seem extremely frivolous, but I'm not. Now I've gotten very deep into No, you're obviously content. not. I'll tell you why. Because if that's what you wanted to do, then after Student of the Year, which is a great launch, all right, you wouldn't do a film like Highway, right? I mean, yeah. that's a choice you made, Correct. which is a certain kind of film. Correct. But like I said, it's come naturally. It's not come of being a student of cinema. That student of cinema journey started whilst I was working. So it obviously didn't happen to you because you were in Student of the Year in the first place. Yeah. That's not a part that any director would imagine you in if they saw that film. How did no. that happen? Destiny, luck has such a big factor to play in it. Imtiaz was thinking of going with an older woman for that part. He bumped into me at a screening and I was very actively pursuing him. Hmm. You're the one who pursued directors, na? I pursue them. Ah. But pursue them not like I don't... Text. I don't, I don't Good pay morning. them. Good morning. I don't pay them to take me in their <laughs> movies. <laughs> like in case anybody was trying to sell that narrative, none of that happens. I very earnestly go and uh, and give them a vibe that that I feel like they may enjoy. Hmm. And um, dedication, hard work, I think sells yeah. on the top of the pyramid and then comes rest everything else. Talent actually is secondary. The hard work and dedication is number one. So I think I gave Imtiaz that vibe that I very excited and uh, want to really work with him. You know, hmm. I gave him that vibe and I was, it was genuine and it was heartfelt. 
and i think he just decided to go this totally off route of a girl who's actually not experienced this life ever that she experiences in the movie hmm. he decided to go real on it that's how it happened and i really again went all in all out gave him everything so was there an audition for the part or not really again there was like i think there was a look test yeah. but i think it was this meeting that made him feel that okay it's an it's an interesting route hmm. he came to my house he because he knows my dad he knows hmm. my mum hmm. he gave me the script he said read it i read the script and it was still a very big moment for me i was like imtiaz ali is offering this also after rockstar you have to hmm. understand it was a huge thing hmm. i mean jabi madan of course but the rockstar also had just happened right i read the script and i was like okay tough 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 but do you do, do, find do, it do. believable though in the sense that a girl of that age and a trucker in in india and in on a highway did you think that could possibly happen the way it does in the film see it's not just that she goes and she falls in love with this man on this journey yeah she goes she leaves her comforted home that is actually comforted but actually the reason for trauma mm. in her life and what you think is your safe space lands up actually being the place that you are not safe in yeah. and what lands up actually not being the safe place becomes the place you feel the safest so it's the contrary so i didn't really think about the trucker okay. ye wo and all i was like ye kuch trauma hai and this is something and i i connected with that okay i connected with that want to um get away from actually that safe space that you think is safe i mean obviously you would have connected with student of the year because if you were a number actually. one fan then you know govinda movies and dancing and all those things i mean it's, it's in that space right yeah but i was not this cheerleader in school or something huh. like you know this huh. the, the girl that shanaya is i didn't know how to walk also in those heels i was walking in those heels and like it's not me i didn't dress up if you saw me the clothes that i wore for my first audition you would have been like that's really not the character so karan actually really had the foresight to be like she'll be able to be this heroine and all see the thing is i wanted to always be heroine but that's not who i am naturally if you see me who i also am and i rather sit in my pajamas than get into an this big like glamorous outfit i'm not that person but you don't choose your first film your first film chooses you and i am so grateful that that's my first film that chose me to be launched by karan johar in a massive production with two other new actors and it was like a dream were other people auditioning for the part of course like, i was a part who, of there is one i don't know any other people but i i remember auditioning and what i've been told 400 girls auditioned for that part i went and i auditioned in my school uniform wow <laughs> dance to bahara bahara something like which that which class were you in i was in the 11th grade okay so there is a video I like that of you in a school uniform and dancing to now i changed my clothes then oh, you did. some okay. something matlab <laughs> but yeah there is a video of me auditioning i was wearing some black thing i remember and some white pink cape thinking that um i'm looking very stylish Hmm. and right after that my mother took me for lunch and everything it was a quite a big deal and i remember being very scared because i'm like you know how do i cut cut away the people who are looking at me and all of that and somebody told me that just imagine that nobody is there or maybe i'm imagining that somebody told me this um but i just was able to cut everybody out and i just see the thing is what i did in front of that audition i used to do a lot as a kid dancing in front of the mirror hmm to different different songs right. and singing to myself and talking to myself and doing scenes i used to do a lot of that to myself like with myself so i just did that in front of the camera i mean that's what acting is right it's controlled insanity i mean you're <laughs> being something that you really not and yeah. you continue to believe that you are correct right correct. and that's what you were doing growing yeah. up in any case correct okay i have to bring this up because we're talking about your first film and obviously you know there is your mother who has been an actor for years your father who's been a director for years a producer for years his father was also you know a director uh, for years and obviously this question has come up in our, in your conversations lots and lots of times nepotism right um one what do you make of it and what became that discussion say 2 years ago when you were the center of it for some weird reason right mm. tv channel going berserk over you one how do you take all that was going on in 2020 uh it was just going this mayhem on social media how do you deal with it so there are two sides to the way you deal with it right one yeah. of it is the controlled side which is okay people have something to say hopefully i will prove to them with my movies that i am actually worth you know it's I, like i'm worth the space that i'm occupying hmm. all those things this is the controlled atmosphere person in yeah. me then then the other person in me being like what the hell is this nonsense yeah. like you know why is this happening for no reason 
see you have to understand nepotism in my in my opinion exists in every industry for some reason you're focusing only on the film industry what is nepotism you're using your connections to leverage a position to help somebody get a position i totally understand that i come from a position of privilege because of the family that i'm a part of so yes maybe people will see my photograph before seeing another third fourth mm. person's photograph but at the end of the day the photograph is not going to lift off the photograph if you are not giving it some base or some value mm. similarly in a finance marketing tech industry if i put somebody else forward saying isne tech kiya isne finance kiya isne marketing kiya please give this person the job but if this person is messing the job up then obviously the company is going to be at a loss right so if i as an actor i'm not being able to deliver the producer will be at a loss mm. so contrary to what people believe you can't pay for a film to do well you can't pay for yourself to do well you can't pay for anything to do well to do well you have to work hard and you have to actually be good and the audience is the biggest barometer of success if the audience believes you are worth that success they will give it to you i am not taking it from them i'm not going to the house and hmm. taking it from them hmm. so i have worked hard to get where i've gotten to so i don't believe that it's fair to continue that conversation yeah no so i i'm, I'm not continuing the conversation no, 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 i'm not yeah. saying that i'm yeah. saying when it happened at the time yeah. i felt that but again i felt but did it disturb you like looking at the level of backlash of course mo- a lot of them are just pure trolls and they take you know they manufactured get, yeah, totally manu- manufactured yeah. but again i believed that the only way i will be able to shut the conversation down is do it through my movies so don't respond don't feel bad of course i felt bad but feeling bad is a very small price to pay for the kind of work eventually that you are respected and loved for and i did that i shut up and i said sit at home work hard and that's exactly what i did and then i went and i delivered a film like gangu bai hmm so who's having the last laugh at least now until i deliver my deliver my next flop <laughs> for now i'm laughing then i'll be laughing also no correct yeah so i was saying at the end of the day you use that fuel and you put it into your movies i can't keep defending myself sure. verbally yeah. i do it through my work and if you don't like me don't watch me like i can't help it like that's something so that i can't sides to this. and another yeah. thing again yeah. how can i control where i'm born bhai nobody decides na in earth ke i will like to be born into the, uh, the, uh, this family i don't choose na you are just born you're born and how can i control again what my parents were doing and then you're telling me that i as a person should feel embarrassed for my father's hard work whatever it is my father worked hard na to become who he is so that's another layer where i feel ki ek ye debate alag taraf hai for for a conversation which is like i totally agree when you're saying that it comes easier to you agreed it does but i am taking that easy thing but i'm i'm working hard for it i'm not working easily you know so hopefully i'm i'm proving to you that listen i'm worth the little bit of an easy start that i got you, you mentioned say finance or technology that's also a place where there's a lot of networking it's just is just is a different it's the law of the yeah, land yeah, yeah. you will try you will try to it's a, it's survival you know you will try to do whatever you can do similarly tomorrow if my child wants to get into acting or get into movies i am not going to be like listen you're not going to have it easy one is not going to have it easy you have to work very hard to prove only if you're worth it will people give you that thing so you have to have super thick skin so you have to continue to earn the audience's love and respect but there's something that's going to happen ali and of course you're aware of it when your child is born and we've seen uh, children of superstars uh, of late past few years the paparazzi culture the fact that you know they just take over the streets i mean like look at your wedding right yeah i mean firstly please tell me why you couldn't announce to the world which day you're getting married <laughs> why is this speculation every news channel aaj ye date hai kal wo date hai you you're bhat cam right you should say is din meri shaadi hai पर वे को नहीं अनाउंस करना है क्योंकि पब्लिक इवेंट नहीं है पब्लिक इवेंट नहीं है बट वो स्पेकुलेशन क्यों चल रहा है दिन भर पर स्पेकुलेशन सम अंकल इज सेइंग नहीं नहीं ये नहीं सम अदर अंकल इज सेइंग नो नो बट दैट इज अ डेट व्हाट्स गोइंग ऑन अरे बट स्पेकुलेशन वाज आल्सो अबाउट सम 25 वीगन काउंटर्स आई सेड आई डिडंट इवन हैव 25 गेस्ट्स वेयर आई एम गोइंग टू गेट 25 वीगन काउंटर्स इन माय हाउस फॉर एंड आई हैव गॉट अ बेसिक हाउस आई मीन आई हैव गॉट अ लवली हाउस बट इट्स नॉट लाइक आई हैव हैड सो मेनी थिंग्स सो देयर वाज अ लॉट ऑफ स्पेकुलेशन nonsensical just say it so that no one speculates no but i didn't find the need to okay 
again i don't care about speculation you speculate what the hell you want to speculate it's fine it's entertaining i don't care about it because i didn't want to confirm it see also you have to understand i live in a residential building with other guests it will be it was anyways a nightmare for them for things we sent them all campers and all it became worse right because there are these cameras every day thinking aaj hi shaadi hai for like some 10 days they were like that palihel was blocked yeah we could barely move because of obviously paparazzi okay why didn't you just choose to have a wedding outside bombay why didn't i choose why did i choose because i wanted to get married at my house okay you know we've danveer and i have lived together in this house for the last so many years since our relationship began i mean we were not living together initially but then we did start living together so we've got so many memories in the house just because of the press and public and people why should i not follow and my maybe dream? other people who want to use pali hill which is blocked yeah but i'm har jod ke unse maafi mangti hu but we took enough preparation and we gave enough this thing ke par ye humne to diya we are not the standing over there and doing andolan i was having my feras in the middle of pali hill na i was having it in my house quietly so contrary again to what people may believe we are very private people i have everything in one house like i have my birthday there i have small parties there i like to do not get out i don't like shusha it's actually very stressful for me the idea of taking people and traveling to another location setting up the location that was too stressful for me hmm. we wanted to do it in a like i wanted to get literally get out of my room get into the makeup room that i get ready in every day and then go and get married which is exactly what happened it was perfect it was seamless it was perfect it was comfortable and i got to interact with everybody because there were only 40 people you know what i mean like it was just exactly the kind of people that we are we aren't the big kind of celebratory people we are not like that your team is going berserk right now saying it's over it's over so no, obviously that <laughs> lands up uh, lands us all into the last question and it is the most important question of this conversation alia bhat who is the president of india Oh God! It's just changed, na. <laughs> Madam President. <laughs> Madam President is the president of. Well, India. Madam President uh, Draupadi Murmu has just been, yeah. uh, you know, some nominated for the job, but uh, Kovind. Ramnath Kovind was our ex. Not ex yet. On this date, on twenty third July, he's still the president. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So you didn't want to give that answer, or what's up? Um, you can't go through so much trolling in your life and still not choose to know who the president of India is. Yet. But why? Why? I mean, why not? Okay, who is the production designer of this film? Production designer and the president of India. Are uh, but you Aliyah, just saw this Aliyah. film. You just saw my film, na? Why would you read who the production designer is? Are you seriously compare? Are you why? You are asking me to be aware of everything that's going around the world. I'm asking you to be aware of film movie that you just saw. Who is the production designer? um babylon fonseca no damn <laughs> i should have got it right <laughs> see at the end of the day i think awareness is um uh, is extremely important but tum kisi aur se bhi pooch lo na yeah everybody cannot sit up and give you answers like that on on the spot like how i put you onto the spot right now you couldn't give me an an answer now you think a production designer is not as important as the yes, president yes, absolutely. but in your job production designer is important because in you are a, you know you are you are you are in the film business so you have to know that in my opinion so ye mera opinion hai so are you roughly saying that there are areas in which you know a lot more than others and why you expect to know everything or certain things that maybe actually what's your point why should you not know the president of india's name here i know ramnath kovind okay. but abhi now it's a trick question i know it's just changed so now i'm not sure whether to ha huh? you're with me na so she's also with me so it's a trick question so mere ko galat answer nahi dena hai to i rather be stupid Dropadi than Murmu pretend guys, to be come on but abhi tumne bola ki but abhi to you just said dropadi ma'am is not the correct connect i mean the, the one who's going to be the president now so now if i had given her name huh. you would have said no it's ramna kovin ha 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 big boo boo and if i said ramna kovin you would have said no no it's dropadi mumu oh, it's not her so i am not giving only an answer because i know that that will add to more controversy that will add to more confusion और तुम लोग मेरे को डम समझो मेरे को कोई इंटरेस्ट नहीं है जाके मेरी फिल्म देखो बस आई थिंक इट्स मोर इंपॉर्टेंट प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया शुड नो आलिया भट्ट थैंक यू सो मच फॉर डूइंग दिस इट्स अमेजिंग सब्सक्राइब टू मिड डे इंडिया 
Get direct notifications on all our videos by clicking on the bell icon.